Hi, in this video I will explain the use case of geographic information systems in an urban context. I will introduce you to loading data into QGIS and will tell you about the planning for this course. Now if you think of GIS or geographic information systems in its early shape, you're probably thinking about maps and maps have always been around in urban research but the last decades the way we're using maps has changed dramatically. We are no longer thinking of maps as end products to be used as more or less fixed input in urban studies, but rather we're thinking of combinations of spatial data as tools that can be leveraged according to the need of the project you're working on. Now think of a digital spatial plan without any location data. It is hard, if not impossible, to see that as an effective tool. Location is the most vital piece of information in such a plan. To put it in more general terms, the use cases of location-based or spatial data are endless. For example, spatial planning itself becomes more and more digital. The formal spatial plans of the Netherlands are digital plans nowadays. You can use them in a map service or in a geographic information system to use and combine with other data in your research project. Interactive planning tools they are combined with calculation models in order to develop better strategies and policies for the urban environment. Thus, you can see the effects of your design changes on the fly. This would not be possible without underlaying geospatial data and models. Research on walkability of cities is highly dependent on spatial information. The network of footpaths and roads, including the width of footpath at any position combined with flow and density measurements, New possibilities are just opening up as we speak and not only in COVID influenced times. So what is a geographic information system? Well, here's the definition. Actually, um, there's a lot of definitions going around and this one is from Wikipedia and it does a pretty good job. But personally, I'm not really into definitions. If you'd ask me, I'd say it's a piece of software, for example, QGIS. And a piece of software combines both spatial and non-spatial data into information. It can give you answers to questions like how many people live within a certain distance of a source of pollution? Or is there a pattern in where people have solar panels on the roof? And what do you see if you combine those solar data information with age of the owner or tenant of that building? What will happen? And you can make very nice maps with a geographic information system. In this course, QGIS will be our main weapon of choice. It's open so you can hack into it if you feel the need to enhance it to it for yourself. But above all, it's one of the best geographic information systems in play at the moment. In this course, you'll be learning about the basics of working with data. And data is a broad subject. For example, typically a GIS project has no fixed data type. It's not like a uh, cut program that has its own standards. DWG or drawing file for AutoCAD and DGN or a design file for MicroStation. Data in a geographic information system can come in different shapes and sizes. Let's give an example of that. So let's have a look at how we can load data into QGIS. You can do that in different ways. The most simple one is just dragging it from your explorer right in your map canvas. However, the most important way of doing things is through the data source manager, which is located here under this button. So let's first have a look at vector data. Vector data is data that is built up from points, lines, or polygons. Start browsing your data by using this button. Here in my data directory, you can see that there are quite a bit of different file types available. Have a look at the data types that we can use within QGIS. Here you see that there is a lot of different options. This is just data types. This is not data. This is just the format of the data. Now, this is of course because GISs are used in a number of fields and every field of work has its own standards. So a GIS has to support them all. The same goes for raster data. Of course, here as well, you would see, you'd be able to see quite a few 
data types. From this point, you can load most anything you like. For example, here, you can see we've got from our Statistics Bureau, we've got a data set with our municipalities. Let's load that one into QGIS. Now the data is loaded. That means that it's all being projected onto a map canvas. From this point on, you can work with your data as you like, and you'll learn more in the next couple of videos. So in the next five videos, a number of subjects will be shown. We'll be using QGIS as our main toolbox, so we start with the basics of that program, the settings and the possibility to expand the program with plugins. Next video will be about data visualization and producing maps. We'll be adding data from data services in different ways as well. Modern digital background maps are easy to use, but there's also the possibility to get historic maps from different years in your project. This takes a little tinkering with the Python console, but we'll manage. And of course, you need to know something about the most important basic for every geospatial thing you do, coordinates. It sounds logical, but every country does coordinates differently. All these themes are covered in the videos in order to get you started. On Brightspace, the possibility for a self-check is available. When you're finished, there's an assignment waiting for you. The result of the assignment will be the main input for the on-site workshop. You can also send in personal requests for the workshop. GIS is a supporting technique within the Urbanism program. We challenge you to think about what the geographic needs in your specific project are and to make sure that you acquire the GIS skills to fulfill those needs. Good luck and enjoy this part of the course.